how do you become a software engineer in 2024? I think that's one of the biggest questions as we are wrapping up 2023. There has been so much that changed this year from layoffs to all these improvements of GPT technologies, all these breakthroughs that they've been launching at OpenAI. That's definitely something that gets a lot of people to think like, is software engineering still a valid field? And if so, how can we become a software engineer? My experience for this year, I personally went through a few rounds of layoff and at the beginning of the year, it's definitely a very hard time. Like a lot of software engineers will worry about their job because the economy is not doing well. So these were some of the economic factors that went into like, oh, we don't need as much software engineer because like a lot of bigger tech companies were over hiring. But after the rounds of layoffs, are software engineers constantly worried about their job due to these improvements in generative AI technologies? My observation is not really. A lot of times we make fun of the response from these generative AI technologies. Like sure, they help us answer a bunch of questions. But what I noticed over the span of the past few months of usage is that sure, it can summarize and give you information really fast, but it lacks a lot of depth. And a lot of times, even when I ask follow up questions, they don't go deep enough. I think it might be because the technology is trying to summarize and make, keep it as simple as possible for most people to read. But that aspect is lacking. And that's one of the most important part of software engineering is the depth. It's why you do something for what reason. And of course, I also notice a lot of new departments like generative AI initiative that's opening at my company. That's additional hackouts new projects focusing on improving software engineering productivities, like tools that help you code complete, help you comment your code, etc. Like a lot of these tools are being developed at these bigger tech companies and they are looking to hire more people on this initiative. Now Gen AI is kind of like the new buzzword, like a lot of companies new favorite department because they want to win the race and they're putting in a lot of money and engineering headcounts into it. So I would say besides the layoff and the economic downward turning, overall, the generative AI and the technology is heading towards a very positive direction. A lot of newer opportunities will be raised. Now that we know a lot of these, what can we do to better position ourselves to become a software engineer? I think the first thing that we had to think about is what are the most in demand job? And there's two ways to look at it. One is the most popular ones. For example, full stack JavaScript. We know how popular this stack is and so many different roles are looking for full stack software engineers. And of course, a lot of them are also being affected by the layoffs because it's such a huge market. Like over the years, JavaScript continued to be popular. New libraries that's coming out. Like every time when I look at startup profiles, I always see a new library, new JavaScript library that they are using and it's very specific to their usage. So there's so much possibilities in this field because JavaScript is such a powerful language. So many different stacks, so many different frameworks, like, like you're not really worried about competition, you just wanna have as much job security as possible. Then I actually think like, sure, JavaScript, these full stack roles are the way to go. Like sure, like there might be a lot of competitions, but there are just so much opportunities out there. And I think it will continue to be the case for 2024. And the second aspect that I want to look at is a more creative way. What is in demand, but there's not enough engineer who are willing to study it, or the language might be more difficult. I think this is a unique way that I recommend a lot of you to maybe consider, especially if you don't really care about the tech stack. Like all you care about is I want to work on a tech project. Like I want to have a job. And these jobs are also very job secure because it's so hard to find a replacement. Based on my research and my personal experience, Android programming is by far the most in demand job, but lack the heck out. Like so many teams, companies that I look at, they are constantly looking for software engineer who knows Android programming. Because a lot of people, especially in the United States, they want to do iOS, they want to do Swift. It's like the cooler things to do and the language itself might be a lot cleaner. But over the years, Kotlin has improved so much. So if you're someone who are willing to become an Android dev, I highly recommend Kotlin. Kotlin will be your best friend and it will help you land those specialized 
job, especially those companies who are looking for Android developers. Besides Android, the next thing is on the info side, Go. Go is a language that's really difficult to be really good at. It's growing really rapidly, and when I do a lot of backend searches, I see a lot of companies looking for Go, and that's like a mandatory skill. Because the language is very simple, but yet difficult to master, make it like a strong barrier to enter. So now a lot of people actually are willing to make that switch. For example, nowadays, a lot of bigger tech companies even consider migrating some of their servers into the Go platforms. So it's not just for startups or smaller companies. Bigger techs are looking at this and considering migrating to Go. But it's definitely something that's more limited than Android programming. So I would say like, will it provide as much security? Yes, but definitely not as much as Android. But if you're on the info side, you're also the last ones to be affected by GPT technology because the domain knowledge there required is way more than typical, let's say, front software engineer. Another language that's just gaining a lot of traction that I see a lot of buzz around it is Julia. I know many machine learning and, and many scientific computing uses that language, but I haven't looked into it enough. I do see the buzz and and given that GPT will be the future, so maybe there's a possibility that you know this language will continue to gain traction. So this is something that you can look at. Hey, what do I think will be the next language that will become really popular? That's like the, going to become like the Python, going to become like the JavaScript. Then maybe I can position myself to get started on that language right now. So by the time it becomes really popular, I already racked up a few years of experience, maybe build some projects that will set me apart and make me more valuable. So I would say like, hey, maybe do some research, like see which one of these three languages will fit what you are looking for. And now given all these languages, my recommendation would be like, sure, like if you're in school, like it will be very straightforward. Try to get that computer science degree, the software engineer relevant degree and take classes that's relevant. Like maybe take an Android class, maybe take some sort of data computing class, something that will help you build some skill set. And of course, at a bigger tech company, when they're hiring entry level, they don't really care your background. They are open-minded to any type of role you want to apply, as long as you prove that you have the willingness to learn in most cases. And other choice for people outside college would be boot camp. And here you have to be very careful because like not all boot camps are the same. And most boot camps are full stack focused. So if you're willing to try out Android or willing to try out some of these languages that I talked about, then maybe you need to take a bootcamp that's Android focused or infrastructure focused. And these skills will continue to help and pay dividends as you learn. And of course, there are many online resources that's great for learning these as well. But then that require a lot of discipline. So you have to decide like what's the best way for you to learn. And one of the last thing that we have to remember as a software engineer is, sure, we are currently a software engineer, but as the GPT technology, all these technology improves. How do we stay relevant? I think continuous learning and trying to know where the market is heading towards is very important. You have to learn to adapt and learn how to use these tools into your advantage. Because for example, if your company or if your company is using a code completion tool or something that can quickly help you generate a class, then you should know how you can take advantage of it or at least know how to use it. You may not have to copy the code, but you need to know like what can it do? Like what's the extent of its power? And then make judgments because this will save you a lot of time. And time will be way more important down the line as these tools are supposed to increase efficiencies. So I think a lot of teams will focus more on how efficient are the engineer given that we have these tools. Like, Because theoretically speaking, they probably are looking for ways to minimize the amount of software engineers that's needed on a project by having way more efficient toolings. So maybe one software engineer can now do two people's job, no problem. So definitely try to stay as relevant, learn how to use these GPT technologies. For example, when I am trying to do a project, I definitely go through a bunch of conversational cycle with, let's say, Bard. I try to ask it in a very vague way and try to go a little more in depth without giving away, of course, the type of project I'm working on. I will use a similar example. For example, like, oh, how do I build YouTube from scratch? And then you keep asking follow-up. But I do realize like the power is still very limited. It's not as knowledgeable 
a, a staff software engineer who might give you the depths. And a lot of time, if I, I'm like, oh, I'm not happy with your response. Like, why would you recommend this? This feels wrong. Then the GPT suddenly is like, oh, you're right. This is wrong. Like, you should try to use this. It's like very like gray line. Like, you don't really get the information unless you know, like, oh, what they're doing is right or what they're doing is not correct. And a lot of these skills are also very important. And that's why I recommend people to continue learning and improve their software engineering skill. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much for this video. I hope it was informative. I think moving towards the future, definitely trying to stay ahead of the curve. And if you can spot a language that's gaining a lot of tractions, maybe that's a good direction that you can also jump into and focus on. So yeah, guys, if you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys next time.